Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be finishing our camera class and also implementing our Vector 3F rotate method. Now, I can't really go in-depth on the quaternion math and the rotate method and still finish the video in a timely manner, so I'll give you sort of an intuitive way to think about it, in a way, and then I'll sort of move on. If you want the more in-depth explanation, look in the quaternion video. So, well, the Quaternion, the Quaternion Companion video, that is. So, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a float for sine half angle. Guess what, what this is going to be? It's going to be float math.sine of math.2radians, I can type, of the angle over 2. And, yeah, so it's the sine of half the angle. And I'm going to do the same thing for cosine. So, cosine half angle equals math dot cosine of math dot two radians angle over two. Why do I need this? Well, because I'm going to be converting my axis of rotation into a quaternion. And here's how I'm going to do that. First off, here are my quaternion components. Float rx, float ry, float rz, and float rw. Y, R, X, and what Y, and Z, and W? Well, R for rotation, X for the component, that's... I don't know. It's a name. So, yeah. So, how do I convert it? Well, of course, it's going to involve the axis components. So, axis.getx and axis.getY. Like I said, it's going to involve them. It's not going to be the entire thing. And W is just going to be 1 for the time being. However, to store the rotation in here, it's of course going to need to involve the angle. And that's where this comes in. Now first off, remember, a quaternion is essentially a complex number. It's just sort of extended to have a, a few extra imaginary components, but it's still, at the end of the day, a, a complex number. And in just a basic complex number, your imaginary axis is usually like the y component of a vector, and your real component of an imaginary number is sort of like the x component of a vector. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because that sort of determines how we're going to distribute this angle. Because we're going to want to, of course, give the sine, the y component of the rotation, to, well, the y component of the, the complex number, and the cosine, which is the x component of the rotation, to, well, the x component of the number. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to give I'm going to multiply the axis dot get x by sine half angle to give the y component to the imaginary part, because, well, that's what the y axis is in the quaternion world, because that's the imaginary part. And the w component, the real part, gets the cosine, because that's the real part of the rotation. That's sort of the intuitive way to think of, of how you're splitting up all these rotations and such. If you want something more in-depth, look in the quaternion companion video. So, now we've converted our vector into a quaternion with the rotation. So now how do we actually perform the rotation? Well, actually, first off, you should probably just, you know, create the quaternion that I've made all these components for. So quaternion rotation equals the new quaternion, rx, ry, and rz, and rw. So, that's the first thing. First thing. Now I'm going to create a quaternion w, that's going to be the result of the rotation. And remember, what is a rotation in the world of complex numbers? It's just a multiplication. So, I'm going to take rotation and multiply it by not my quaternion, wait, no, not my quaternion, but by this vector, the vector that I'm supposed to be rotating. And that effectively performs a rotation. Not quite, though. It, well, I shouldn't say that. This does perform the rotation. We've just taken the vector and we've rotated it by this rotation we've just created. But we sort of want to cancel out all this extra quaternion stuff because we want the vector part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, create a quaternion, a quaternion conjugate, which is rotation dot conjugate. And in order to cancel out all the extra quaternion parts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in addition, 
multiply this by the conjugate. Why? Well, the conjugate's effectively the same thing, except with all the real component, or not real component, with all the imaginary components made negative. So that will effectively cancel it out, in a way. You know, I'm sort of trying to give an intuitive way to think about it. That's really the best I can do it as an intuitive way to think about it without going in depth. So, if this isn't a good enough explanation for you, that's fine. I totally understand. Just check out the Quaternion Companion video whenever I release that, and I'll go a little bit more in depth on this stuff there. So anyways, now that we actually perform the rotation, and we've cancelled out the extra Quaternion parts, essentially, the x, y, and z components of this w Quaternion are now, well, the x, y, and z components of our final vector. So, I'm going to set my x, well, I don't even need to use the Gaussian setter, I'm say x equals w dot get x, y equals w dot get y, and z equals w dot get z. And the rotation is complete. I'm just going to return this. And there you go. That is a vector rotation. Well, yeah, this, this is how you rotate a vector by some axis and some angle using quaternion math. So with that, we have completed the camera class. So now all we have to do is find some way to look through the camera. And the way I'm going to do this is in our transform class. I'm going to have one more final thing. It's going to be static, just like all this other stuff, so yeah. It's going to be a private static camera camera. And I'm going to create getters and setters for it. So I'm going to, yeah, I can generate getters and setters. Generate getters and setters for the camera at the end. So, and what I'm going to do is in my get projected transformation, I'm going to apply the camera to this. So I'm going to, essentially I'm just going to move everything, so the entire world, everything. So it looks like the camera's moving. So I'm going to move everything opposite to the way the camera moves. So if I move forward with the camera, the world's going to move back. That way it appears everything's going to move towards me. That's sort of the idea. So, in order to do this, I'm going to need, of course, to create a matrix 4F camera matrix. It's a new matrix 4F, and you already know where this is going. We're going to need yet another initialization method in our matrix class. So I'm going to copy our init identity method, I'm going to go under our init projection method, and change this to init camera. Now, this part is actually only going to be concerned with the camera rotation. For the camera translation, I'm just going to use the init translation that we already have. So, here, this one's going to take in some vector 3f for the forward vector, and some vector 3f for the up vector. And, what I'm going to do here is first off, I'm going to create have some vector 3f, I'm going to have f, which is going to equal forward, and I'm going to do f.normalize. Why? Just in case forward is somehow not normalized. That way, this normalizes it, and the reason I'm creating a new one is so that I don't affect the original forward vector with the normalization operation. So now, I'm going to create a vector 3f. I'll just call it x, because it's going to be the mount on the x-axis. Actually, it's going to be right, isn't it? Yeah, this is going to be right, so I'll just call it r. So r is going to start equal to up, but I'm going to start with r.normalize, but I'm going to calculate it by r equals, well, r, which is currently the up vector, dot cross with f, the forward vector. And that should give me the right vector. And finally, I'm going to have vector 3fu, which is going to be a recalculation of the up vector by n dot cross with u. Wait, not u, r. And why am I recalculating this? N o. What? f dot cross with r. What am I talking about? I'm thinking in uvn coordinates, apparently. <laughs> Anyways, so why are we recalculating this? I'll be perfectly honest. I don't remember. I just know that when I was putting together the test code, I ended up needing to do this recalculation for some odd reason. 
So, I, I wish I could give you a better explanation than that, but for some reason in my test code, I ended up needing to recalculate it. Fortunately, though, setting up the matrix after this point is pretty easy. I want the r.getx, because it sort of makes sense that, you know, the right component is the x-axis, dot get y, and yeah, I literally just plug in the appropriate axis, if that makes any sense. So, one second, I want to tab over, and then I'll explain, because I can't explain when tabbing for some reason. So, the r is effectively the vector along the x-axis, so I want the x component, the y component, and the z component in the matrix. And literally the whole thing is just that simple. So, u, the up, I want up.getx, and then up.gety, and then up.getz. And finally, for z, the forward axis, z.getx, and well, f dot get y, and finally, f dot get z. So, there we go. That should initialize the camera transformation matrix. But unfortunately, I'm out of time again. So in the next video, I'll do the few minor things that I'll need to do to apply the camera to the transformation matrix, and then I'll show you how you can get set those up to be a complete free-moving camera, how to do basic input to control the camera, and it's going to be pretty cool. It's not going to be a long video, but it'll be some interesting stuff. Thank you. See you then.